Hey guys, how are you doing? Um, I am having some painfully difficult technical issues. Um, as is typical, Chrome just updated and trying to share my screen so you can see what I'm drawing and stuff. And every time I do, it crashes. So I'm just going to try this one more time. If I disappear, uh, bear with me. I'll be back in a second and I'll try again. Nope, that did not work. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm uh, struggling here, uh, but um, if you bear with me, I'm going to try and like download Chrome again. I know that sounds pretty, pretty basic, um, but I can't get in. Oh, let me try Firefox. You guys can watch me struggle while I uh, try to get this working. Yeah, for some reason, every time I log, uh, every time I try to share my screen, it's not letting me in. So without sharing my screen, you can't see what I'm doing, and that's obviously not going to be much use. Uh, it's hard to design something when you can't see what I'm talking about. So, um, so let's try this again. And thank you all for joining me, by the way. I'm sorry we are starting in such a... Um, technically inept fashion. Um, I'm going to just close this window and try in Firefox. See you in two seconds. Okay, I'm running out of ideas. Um, <laughs> I've tried Firefox, that didn't work. Um, 
can't believe it serves me right for not checking beforehand, but I'm trying to. Okay, so sorry about this. Um, I am running out of um, approaches, but I have one more thing I'm going to try. So if you can stick with me, um, if I can't get this working, I'll come back and I'll say we're going to have to cancel today. Technical issues won't let me uh, proceed. Um, so uh, bear with me. This might take me like five or ten minutes to try and get it set up. Um, but if this doesn't work, I'll, I'll come and explain myself um, but yeah really sorry guys uh just uh don't can't see a way around this just chrome is crashing every time i share my screen so um yeah bear with me i'll, I'll go and try this and then i'll be back in a few minutes okay
Hey, everybody. Um, it's a no. It's a no. It's a hard no. So, um, hey, let's just maybe take questions, I guess. I can't share my screen. I can't show you anything. Every time I go to share my screen, it crashes Chrome. So um, thank you for waiting. <laughs> maybe we can just do uh, a, a, a wide open Q&A today, I guess. Um, we'll do that in bed, and I'll, I'll sort this out for next week, and I'll be able to share with you my chicken designs and everything else. So thank you for joining me. I'm really sorry about that. Um, something buggy with Chrome, it's automatically updated. It won't let me share my screen. So let me take a few comments and see what's what's happening. Raymond said, here to egg on. He was first. Thank you, Raymond. And Ray said, hi, Michael, from very cold Macclesfield. It is freezing. Um Last night, apparently, on the radio this morning, they said it was the coldest night in 25 years. Um, and we had ice on the inside of our windows last night, inside the house. It was that cold. Um, so Ray is absolutely right. It is freezing here. Kathleen says, hi from NYC. I learned last week that chickens have combs. I learn something new on front every week. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the chicken saga is paused for now, unfortunately. I can see we've already got a lot of chicken Puns coming in. Um, Bo said last week I learned to have sweat web and dark shades. Kevin says good one. Um, Tom Tory is here, farm brothers, fellow farmers. Angie's here for part two. Yeah, sorry. Um, Tom Tory's just finished doing egg an egg mandala coloring book for Easter. Okay, so chickens and eggs is the theme of the day. Jerry is here. Yeah, chickens. Amira, good good day, everyone. From a very warm Georgia. It's not fair. Um, South London Resale Michael, I wonder if you could give a shout out to my design students. Could you say big shout out to Diana's media design students at New City College? Well, there you go. I just said it. I hope that was good enough for you. Big shout out to Diana's media design students at New City College. Sorry, it's been uh, not the best uh, one for you to join today. I hope you're all doing good. Uh, I hope it's warm where you are. Uh, Leonard, or just me, yeah, we have got technical difficulties. Jennifer, more egg samples, very nice. Teddy says, good morning, all. Um, yeah, could could have been a Chrome extension. Uh, just like, looks like it's messed up and I don't wanna go through every Chrome extension and turn them off and try it, try it every time. So I'll figure it out for next week. Ray, yes, you're right, it's clocked up. Melanie, chicken is getting too much attention. Yeah, okay, it's really, Really heavy on the chicken puns. Beth, round two of the chicken fight. Uh, thought you chickened out. Here for the chicken memes. Um, Amber is here and says, hi, Raymond. Rooster blues be gone. That's a bit of a stretch, I think. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see if we can catch up here. And uh, yeah, I should just say, um, I'll just take questions today. So I can't share my screen. I'll just take questions. Feel free to post them in here. Uh, yeah, I did not chicken out. We've had that one a few times. AT says, hey, uh, restarted all the equipment. Uh, I've not done a hard restart, but I don't think it's going to help, to be honest. It looks like it's a Chrome bug um, that's uh, not working. Karen says, Mercury and Retrograde. Yeah, maybe that could be it. Um, why focus on chickens? Uh, just because we did a chicken design last week, which we didn't quite finish, and I was going to uh, finish that this week. Big question from Heather. Okay, let's go for this one first. Heather, hi, Michael. Sorry your tech is fighting back. General Amazon merch question. I've been tier 500 for a while. Uh, do, 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 do. All slots filled, sold over 500 shirts. Does much randomly promote you to the next tier, like lower tiers? I seem to have been waiting around for long to be promoted. Um, yeah, the, the um, so the question is, when will I get teared up? I, I really don't know. I don't think Amazon knows. I think it's quite random and quite, um, who knows? Uh, you, you're playing with world's, one of the world's three or four biggest companies, um, and they are not, uh, what are we to them, I guess I would say? We are not the, the biggest concern. Um, for them, so I don't think you can really rely on um, there being a regular tearing up process. Um, I think it, it has eventually, but you know, um, you just can't unfortunately rely on it. I'm afraid. Lance says hi, Michael, uh, and Holloway says hope your pipes 
don't freeze. I think that was, or oh, don't burst. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. South London reseller says, thanks so much. No problem. Grey Elephant Club, hello from pretty cold Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, I hear that gets uh, pretty cold as well. Kevin, can you tell us more about your vision for the Discord app? Um, so Kevin's about, I set up a private Discord for the ideas workshop yesterday. Um, to be honest, I'm not much of a Discord person. I've not really used it much before. I'm only just getting used to it. I do find it quite difficult, actually, <laughs> um, with all its different quirks and stuff. But, um, yeah, the idea is that I just thought I'd, I'd set up a, a Discord, a private text chat and stuff for the Ideas Workshop students so that we could have kind of a live uh, chat for those who wanted it and feedback and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've set it up. I'm going to roll with it for a while. We'll see how it goes, if it works, and if people are getting value from it and it's helpful, then, um, then we'll keep keep going um if it's not then i might close it down and you know we'll we'll find other solutions but yeah just trying it out really at um yeah I, i'm not gonna i think i'm gonna give up <laughs> i don't want to waste any more time uh trying to get it raymond an egg inside a square ice block would be a good basic shape start. I really don't know what that refers to, Raymond. Angie, still curious about your ideas workshop, but maybe further down the line. Concern sharing ideas within your community will only encourage others to copy my ideas. Can you speak to this, please? Uh, yes, I can. Um, I think, first of all, the ideas workshop, um, obviously, it's closed now. We're not really sure when we'll open it up again. Um, it is primarily a course and tools to help you come up with great ideas. So there is a community. That is one aspect of it if you want that. But the community is by no means um, necessary. You don't have to join the community. You don't have to post ideas. You don't have to share things in the community if you don't want to. You can just consume the videos, consume the training materials, download all the worksheets, download the, the summaries, uh, download the tools or access the tools and play with them and make them your own. Um, yeah, you don't have to be part of the community. So that's one one part of it. Um, I think certainly the, the bulk of the value in the Ideas Workshop is in the multiple session videos, how-to videos, uh, stuff like that. I also do li special exclusive live stuff um, for the Ideas Workshop. Um, but if you do want to come in the community and share your ideas, which is something we also do, I we do homework projects, so you post your designs and I will review them. Um, will people copy them? Well, actually, according to the terms and conditions of the ideas workshop, um, that is prohibited. You're not, you know, you're not there to copy other people's ideas. So I do what I can try and prevent that in the terms and conditions. But you're right that you know, if you post ideas, they may be copied. Um, I, I think. At the end of the day, it's uh, it's the nature of the beast. Whether you post them in you know a community like the Ideas Workshop or you post them on Redbubble, designs get copied. Um, so I think we've done what we can to minimise that, and it's really more a case of trying to help people with the idea skill and ability. And it's I would say you know ideas can be can be valuable certainly, but it's unlikely that you'll ever have a single idea that's worth you know, that's really worth protecting um, that heavily. I think it, it's a, a lot comes down to, and the, the mindset I have is we just create a lot of work, we put it out there, and uh, over time that builds into a nice, big, healthy portfolio of designs, and then you can, you know, you'll make a decent income from that. And if one design gets copied, it's not the end of the world because others can come and take it. And so, um, so, yeah, I think hopefully that answers your question and a few different uh, factors to that. Andy Ray, not sure if you do KDP, Michael, but they are introducing hard covers, which is a good move. That does sound like a good move. Um, I do have my designs on KDP, but I don't pay attention to it. I think don't think it makes more than a couple hundred dollars a month for us. But um, but yeah, uh, hard covers can't can't be a bad thing. Lance, do you know if patent drawings illustrations are copyrighted? Seems like a good place inspiration. Um, I don't know. I would imagine um, patent drawings would perhaps be under some kind of protection, whether that would be copyright or something else, I'm not sure. Um, and Lance says, my understanding, at least in the US, is that illustration becomes part of public domain when you file that patent. Uh, possibly, possibly. Um, quite how you're going to make that into a design, um, 
I'll leave it up to you. I suppose there could be application for that. If you've got a nice illustrated graph of a plane or something like that, then that might make a nice T-shirt. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, my concern would be with patents, would there be brand names and stuff in there that people would be searching for? And would that be difficult to create designs around? I don't know. But um, yeah, honestly, don't know. Uh, I would I would have to do some research on that. Jay, if you ask a question on a shirt, do you put a question mark? Um, that is a good question, Jay. I think it does depend on the design, but usually I would. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to try and keep to grammatically correct where, where possible. And... Uh, questions when you're posing a question, yes. Um, but it's not a blanket rule. I think it does depend on the design. Um, and I can't think of an example, but I think you have to kind of judge it yourself sometimes. Another, another thing is, is exclamation marks on T-shirts and, and on phrases and stuff. Uh, like a lot of jokes, people will have automatically feel that you should add an exclamation mark onto the end of a, a pun or a joke or something like that. And that's not a good idea. Usually on T-shirts, it looks a bit amateurish. Um, so, yeah, a couple of things there. Heather says, okie dokie. Um, our AT's got some more Chrome tips. Uh, Beth, what is the program you using to do the designs? So my designing last week, I started with Procreate on the iPad, on my iPad Pro. Then I moved it over to Photoshop. Um, if you're not already using either of those um, programs, I think Procreate is probably the best sketching illustration app on the iPad. Um, but if you're not using Photoshop, then I would recommend going with Affinity Photo, which is their kind of Photoshop equivalent. I think it's about like $50 if that, and I think it's even reduced and, and cheaper right now. And I think they have something like a 80-day trial or they did um, a few weeks ago. So uh, yeah, Affinity Designer would be my recommended one. I'm still wedded to Photoshop. That's the only piece of Adobe software I still use um, daily. I'm just uh, a bit too wedded to it to really uh, drop it. But if I was starting from scratch, I'd definitely go with Affinity, and then you wouldn't have to pay the uh, Adobe tax, which is a bit expensive. AT, which POD is doing the best for you right now? Um, really no major change. Spam number one, followed by Red Bull, followed by T-Public, and those two usually clamber around a bit. Um, and then it's the rest, you know, and there's uh, there's quite a long list of, sites where I make uh, less than $100 a month, but cumulatively they they contribute a, a, a decent amount a month. Um, just logged into Displate this morning, actually. Hadn't logged into there since I uploaded a few designs to test it out last year. And they uh, they have sold, they've got $50 worth of stuff in there. So uh, of royalties accrued in Displate. So Unfortunately, um, Display is closed to new artists right now. But if you did get in last year when I was recommending people check it out, um, I think in my P big POD review blog post last year, I said Display were growing fast. It's probably something you want to pay attention to. Um, if you did that and you did log in and you did uh, set up an account and you did upload stuff, then maybe check in and see if anything sold. Um, because I still I have the ability to upload because I had an artist account from last year, so that might be worth checking out. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, if you've not if you're not already on display, I don't think you can you can get it right now. Um, Gray Elephant Club says the cows are demanding equal time. And Holloway, I'm a tad frustrated with merch. I've not sold a single shirt on merch yet, though my designs have improved. Should I just focus a cool idea development? Uh, should I just focus on cool idea development, I guess, and stop worrying about trying to hit niches? Um, yeah, I, I, it's hard to know. It's really hard to know without, you know, looking at someone's designs and what the market they're going after and and all the different factors involved. Um, I think if you've been doing... One thing I would say is if you've been doing something for a, a, for a number of months, so more than a month, maybe two months, maybe three months, if you've been doing something for three months and you've not seen anything working, then the one thing you know for certain is that it's not working. Something's not working there. And I don't know whether you've had successful sales on Redbubble or TeePublic or other platforms, um, but I would say if, you, if you're doing something and you know, you've been doing it for a few months and you've not seen results, then something's wrong because in my experience, um, you know, uh, 
it doesn't take that long to get sales. If you're doing things the right way and if you're uh, using the right kind of approach, then sales come, you know, I'm not saying sales are overnight or anything like that. And obviously it takes a long time to build up sales of any significance that you can actually have a decent income from. But you should get something, you know, pretty quickly. Um, like this plate's a good example. I think it was, you know, maybe mid-August or something last year that I set up an account and uploaded some stuff. I only put like five designs of them, but they've made them sale. So I've proven the concept. Like it's not worth anything to me in terms of monetary value right now, but I know that it works. I've uploaded some of my designs. I've tagged them. I've given them decent titles and sales have been made. Okay. It's been six months down the line, but it has, you know, it's proven itself. Um, if, if you're not seeing results like that, and then I think you do need to go back to step one and kind of, you know, ask yourself why. Um, you, but yeah, without being what part piece of the puzzle is missing, what you know, thing needs to be tweaked. Um, it's really hard to hard to offer um, much advice there. But I would say maybe you know one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard is if something's working, keep doing it. So if you're if something's working for you on Redbubble, just keep going after that. If something's working on Etsy, just keep going after that. Um, and if if something's not working, which is not working for you, something's wrong in your approach or your designs or your market. So try something else. Try varying it, varying it up or something. Um, Tom Atori says, Ideas Workshop is awesome. Gave me different points of view to design in general. Cool, thank you. Um, Kevin, a lot of people within the community help others sharpen ideas from what I've experienced. Yeah, and that's obviously that's um, part and parcel of it. And uh, if if you want that, that 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 is there. You know, you have like-minded artists and designers around, and we have some great artists and designers in the in the workshop. Not just me, um, but you know, other designers who are doing great on different platforms, like art, you know, doing art licensing deals offline as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of people to to bounce ideas off and get feedback from. No problem. Thank you, Beth. Swearworks, do you think outsourcing the uploading is good next steps to grow much biz for those of us who have traditionally all steps itself? Yeah, um, I think it is. Um, that's something I've done quite extensively, uh, whether family members or or hiring uh, virtual assistants or whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, I think the uploading process is fairly basic, copy-paste, copy-paste, that kind of thing. I know there's various software things out there which, which will do stuff as well. Um, I, I'm not big on that kind of automating software. I worry about implications of that. On, um, on the sites you're uploading to and, and the signals it sends. So I've always preferred to have someone manually uploading stuff. Um, so yeah, I think that's a that's a good next step. Raymond, new Affinity Photo and designer, to, and designer tools now available. Yes, I think they updated them last week or the week before or something. So um, they are, uh, they have been updated with some cool new features, including text on a path in uh, Affinity Photo, which is, which is a pretty essential one for me. Tomodori, any idea why Redbubble traffic died? Three days, no visitors, or is it just me? Um, I don't know. I, I can't say that I've experienced the same, um, so it could be just you. Uh, we know Redbubble have been having some ups and downs and stuff. Um, I don't know. They had the, you know, the kind of ban wave and stuff. I'm not really sure where that's up to. And uh, no, I can't say my traffic has died on Redbubble, certainly not. Um, so, yeah, could just be you. Uh, AT says, Display is accepting portfolio submissions. So there we go. Um, if you're interested in Display, then apparently you can at least submit your portfolio. Uh, be Awesome says, you are awesome. Thank you. Have faith. And the workshop was very awesome. Thank you. Candice, I have a scale design that is selling consistently, but it's a birthday type shirt using different ages. I try to design more birthday themed designs, or is that a saturated, harder market? Um, that's a tricky one. I think, it, you, like I just said, if you've got something that's working, then I'm always tempted to say, let's do more of that because you've proven you can do it once. Chances are that you can do it again. Um, but yeah, birthday, it depends how 
generic a birthday design we're talking about. Um, if it is completely like broad birthday design, that's, that's going to be difficult. If it's around a particular niche or market, um, but it's attached to birthday, so you've got kind of an overlap of a couple of niches, then then that might be more worth pursuing. Um, but yeah, um, I think I would say a bit like, um, uh, what's the what's the thought? Um, a bit like I was saying last week about t you know t-shirt designs not being something that takes you too long. So um, I think sometimes in the time it takes you know, to ask a question or to research or whatever, you could have created the designs, you know, it doesn't take that long to actually create a handful of designs and push them out there. And, um, and yeah, uh, you would just have them up and then you would just see like, instead of uh, trying to weigh everything, you know, and judge which, what you should be working on, sometimes it's better just to just kneel down and blast a load of designs out the door and then, and then at least they're out there, and you can see, and then you can review and see if anything actually works. So, yeah, I hope that helps, Candice. Uh, Be Awesome says, I have made plenty of many with all of my merch sales. Last year, over 200,000. Cool. Awesome. Candice, how do you protect your account if using a VA? Uh, it's difficult. Yeah, I, this is why I've always used uh, family, not used. I have employed family members um, or, or close friends to... Uh, um to do that kind of stuff um so that i know i can trust them um i think it's easier if you're starting with a new account so if you're having a new account on any platform and you're uploading stuff for the first time then of course it's not there's no incentive really for a va to rip you off or to pocket the money because there's no sales coming in so so that's one thing to to bear in mind um but yeah th there isn't re uh, there's no ability within merch or within redbubble or with any of the uh, accounts that I'm aware of or sites really to add a, a user who can access stuff and upload stuff, but can't, you know, grab your money if they wanted to or something. Um, uh, Swarwick says, Ooh, text on a path in affinity. Cool. Yes. I believe it is now available. Uh, Swearwork says, Candice, at least it was for me. I was not going to have a VA upload touch and focus them on other platforms. PODs and sites. So there, yeah, there you go. And Candy says, yes, family is a good idea. Yeah, I think that's one of the safest ways to go anyway. Um, Tori, do you use Threadless, how it works? Yes, uh, Threadless has been a, a pretty good um, pretty good investment of time overall over the past year. I think I only set up a Threadless account. So First of all, Threadless has two kind of sides to the business. There's Threadless, which is a kind of curated market where you can submit designs, and it's kind of an ongoing T-shirt competition. You submit designs, people can vote on them, and then Threadless, I assume whoever's running Threadless, takes a look and picks the best ones or picks their favorite ones, and then they list them on the main Threadless website. So... If you go to Threadless, click on men, then you'll be able to see all the T-shirts that they've selected, uh, kind of the curated Threadless uh, site. And then there's the other side, which is more of a kind of a somewhere between a Redbubble and a Teespring approach. So it's more like a Teespring that they want to have your storefront and then you can sell stuff, but they also have a kind of marketplace where people can search and can find your designs if they wanted to. Now, the downside of that is Threadless is not a big traffic driver. They're not. They're nowhere near, you know, your Red Bubbles or your T Publics in terms of organic traffic. So it's un it's unlikely that you'll make anything like the same kind of numbers of sales and stuff. However, having said that, um, I set up with that approach with Threadless, maybe late 2019, I think, um, uploaded maybe 50 to 100 designs of my top selling designs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, under a brand, kept it all within my kind of brand, uh, my Instagram brand and all that kind of stuff. And it was uh, pretty decent. I think we made maybe a couple of hundred dollars over the Christmas period. And then it's been a trickle through that. But what I also did was submit some of those designs to 
the threadless kind of competition. One of those got selected, and that was quite a decent payout from that. And that continues to be uh, a decent seller on on Threadless.com. So uh, the other thing about Threadless is that they have they they manage the kind of art licensing, uh, offline licensing for artists like uh, Stephen Rhodes and uh, Hillary White Rabbit and other big you know T-shirt designers and artists. So that is a possibility I've had because I've put because I've uploaded designs to my Threadless, you know, storefront. They've been noticed and selected by Threadless and reached out and said, "We like these. We'd like to license them to Spencer's or Hot Topic, and we'll do it all on your behalf, and you'll get a cut and blah blah blah." So that's that's happened um, via Threadless as well. So all that to say, if you're doing, you know. Quality original work. Obviously, go and familiarize yourself with the kind of vibe of Threadless. You need to be producing work that kind of fits within that um, that market and that demographic. And that's usually funny, trend-based stuff. And um, I wouldn't say that you have to be a, a great artist to, to have designs on there, but you have to bring something to the party that's original and unique and, and different and at a certain level of quality. So if you feel you, you meet that, then I would definitely... Um, both set up a store so that your stuff can be found via the marketplace and, and Threadless can perhaps notice it, but then also submit stuff to the Threadless ongoing competition, maybe some of your best sellers or designs you think are most appropriate for that kind of crowd. Uh, that's what I did. I just picked a few that I thought, you know, these are probably, these are pretty close to the kind of stuff that does quite well on Threadless. So let me upload those to the competition side and we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, hope that uh, covers it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pleased with how Threadless has been working out. It's not a big money spinner at the moment, but the opportunities it gives you if you're in the right place and stuff, um, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a good site. Candice, have you always had a gift for drawing or did you go from someone with no ability but you taught yourself? I love watching you go from a sketch to a finished design. You should do more drawing shoots. Yeah, um, obviously I would have been doing one today if uh, Chrome didn't mess me around. But um, have I always been, I've always been, yeah, I've always been arty and doodly. I've always, I was always doodling in school on my textbooks and stuff. I always sketch something. and. Actually, I was just thinking about this yesterday. I was always sketching stuff, especially, um, I don't know, when I was maybe hit kind of 14, 15, and I was listening to music. I would always, you know, illustrate lyrics, like take a few words of a lyric or something and draw a little character. And I think I was almost drawing little designs, really. I was drawing like little T-shirt design, you know, sketches, preliminary sketches. I guess that's... You know, that's why this all comes semi-naturally to me. I've been doing doodles of designs and little characters and, and things for a long time. Um, I didn't study, I, I did intend to go and study illustration at degree level and get a degree in illustration, but I dropped out, I, I canceled my plans at the last minute and decided to go and get a part-time job instead and uh, started doing part-time graphic design work and stuff like that, which I think in retrospect was probably the right approach however i i think i'm i'm, I'm a competent uh i don't know what you call it illustrator cartoonist artist um but i'm not by any means you know I, I i lack some of the finesse and that's why i turn to hiring other people from time to time to really give my work that extra push that it needs um if I feel like I have a great idea, but I can't realize it myself because my skills aren't there, or even if my skills may be there, but it would take me days and weeks to, to complete it, then I find a designer who's really competent in that particular style or approach and I hire them. Um, but I think that really does give me an advantage because I'm have, being a designer, then hiring designers, you have that strength to know exactly to tell them what to do and you know how to explain things to them. So. Um, so yeah, um, I, I guess I have always had a gift for drawing and I've always been, but I kind of self-taught approach, never studied at a high level. I did an art and design course, um, foundational year, like a year, um, which I think they call it foundation degree or something, but it's really just a year of you 
drawing and doing whatever you want, really, <laughs> which you have to do in the UK before you go and do a, a, a fine art degree of any kind. Um, but yeah, I dropped out after that and uh, started doing graphic design, building websites, doing logo stuff. So it's kind of been self-taught uh, since then. Tomatori, my schools may have a chance. Yeah, hopefully uh, schools, I think, certainly can work on Threadless. Uh, people like Obinson, who I've got an interview with on my website, mycholastic.com, um, he's pretty big on Threadless. I think he's had some of the best sellers over the years, and he does a lot of schools. However, he does them in a very cartoony, cute style. Um, so, yeah. Andre, do you use any tools to validate ideas or just put them up at the buyer's talk? Um, I certainly lean towards put, just put them up and let the buyers talk. Um, I think I am my own internal validation of ideas by now, you know, doing this for seven plus years. I have a decent inkling for what designs are going to hit and what aren't, um, or at least the kind of designs that um, are more likely to hit. I, I'm, I'm not very good with predictions. Um, for example, this year I've started trying to hop on a few trends again, and I've had, you know, it's been a bit hit and miss. Um, but yesterday I did a design around a particular trend, and it uh, I, I completed that design in the morning, and by the afternoon it had sold one on Redbubble, and uh, it it was blowing up on Instagram and stuff, and and yeah, so I think it's a uh, it is a bit. It's more a case of put stuff out there, see what happens, and roll with punches. Don't expect every design to make sales. And uh, every now and again, you'll have something that organically, magically, you know, takes off if it's if it's good stuff in the first place. So yeah. Um, okay, Swearworks for your Instagram. Is it a all merch focused account or more like an Insta brand account with lots of pictures and then the random shirt? Um, it's somewhere in between. It's more like a clothing brand type account um, with mostly pictures of designs and then the occasional, you know, something else, uh, maybe the odd joke or something like that. Um, so, yeah, it's not it's not like a just clothing focused, but it's, it's usually that I will take a design and just maximize that design and just that would be the, the image. You know, I wouldn't posting mock-ups very often i would post real photos of people wearing the shirts if we get those sent in from etsy reviews or something like that but usually it's just the artwork so it's more like an artist's instagram if that makes sense you know and if you imagine an artist who was just designing t-shirts all the time if you look at vincent trinidad's instagram or obinson's or david olenick's or you know people like that hillary white rabbit stephen rhodes um it's it's that kind of vibe so hope that makes sense uh, Mantis, is it a practice to focus on the same keywords in Redbubble as you do on Amazon? Asking because I can't manage to get any views on Redbubble and my Amazon listings find some success on Amazon. Um, so I, I use pretty much the same keywords on both sites. I don't, um, I don't really tailor things to one or the other. Obviously, they have their own internal differences between how they display things and stuff. So that's fine, but I don't make, you know, distinction between them in terms of keywords. Um, uh, I can't manage to get any views on Redbubble on my Amazon listing. Finds. I mean, yeah, the thing you've got to remember, of course, is Redbubble is completely different to Amazon. It's different to TeePublic. They all have different strengths and weaknesses. And, and some of this is random and, and just weird. You know, for some reason, Redbubble will outrank Amazon on certain phrases. For some reason, there'll be a TeePublic design that for whatever reason, you know, it kind of picked up on by a few blogs 10 years ago, and then there's a few links pointing to it. So that outranks everyone for that particular phrase or something. Um, so it, yeah, you can't really predict or say why certain things happen. You just kind of have to accept that, you know, some of your designs will get lost in the mix on certain sites. Some of them will, will get boosted really well on other sites. Um, and it could just be that you're, your designs have found a particular hit. You got kind of lucky on a particular design and it, and it started snowballing on Amazon and didn't on Redbubble. So, um, or it could be that there's a lot of competition on Redbubble where there isn't on Amazon or vice versa. So, so yeah, um, 
I, I would say, by all means, if you think your keywords are not strong enough, then, then revisit them. But I, I don't really think there's much to be gained, excuse me, from a, a distinction in your keywords between different sites. Um, and for a strong reason to do so. So hope that helps. Candice, do you use Merch Informer? If so, which features do you find most useful? Um, I do not, Candice. Um, I do have a, an account. Neil was kind enough to set me up with an account many moons ago, um, but I can't remember the last time I logged into it. Um, it's just not my approach. Uh, I, I suppose I could use it to, to uh, help me validate certain niches or markets if I wanted to get into them, but I find it much more organic and natural to simply search on Amazon. Um, you know, if I have an idea, and that's usually the way I work, I have an idea, I then then go and validate it and look on Amazon or Redbubble to see if there's miles of competition or if someone's done it before me or whatever. If they have, sometimes I'll duck out. Um, other times I'll proceed. But yeah, I don't I don't use Merch Informer. It's not my uh, process and I just... Um, prefer to do the original stuff that I um, that comes from the top of my head or whatever. So yeah, hope that helps. Beth, what are the copyright implications of taking a few words from a lyric and creating a design? Um, it can be a complicated topic this, but um, I think the good the example I come back to a lot is uh, David Olenix taco design which is every now and then i fall apart with a picture of a taco so obviously he has taken the exact quote the complete lyric from bonnie tyler but he has added a picture of a taco thereby transforming the meaning and obviously that's the that's the joke he's transformed the meaning of the of the lyric um I think that stuff is very safe because it's truly transformative you're creating a design um you're cl it's Clot, um copyright infringement of a lyric to another lyric because you're not, you know, writing a song, you're doing a design. So it's a different medium in the first place. Um, and I don't, I'm not aware of anyone actually getting in trouble for using a, a lyric like that. I think where people get in trouble is if they take a Bonnie Tyler lyric or whoever it might be. If you did every now and then I fall apart with a picture of Bonnie Tyler and it was about Bonnie Tyler and you were using Bonnie Tyler's uh, name your titles and keywords and things like that, then obviously that's not going to be safe. But if you're doing something transformative with a with a phrase or a quote or a line, um, I think you're safe. And I think because, you know, you're not really going to be able to get much more than a, a line of a lyric on a design anyway. Um, don't get me wrong. If you took uh, like the B script, the B movie script and that kind of thing of people having the full script on a T-shirt, um, that could get you in trouble. So if you took the whole lyrics from, of the heart and print it on a t-shirt, that would probably be not safe. Um, but yeah, if you're taking a line, I think I think it's safe, especially if you're doing something transformative with it, i.e. changing the meaning thereof. Um, if you're just writing every now and then I fall apart in white text on a black shirt and there's no joke and there's no transformation of the meaning, then I think that's risky um, or just kind of basic and unlikely to, to really, um, really help out really make sales. Hope it helps. Rondingen, can you please tell me what that green thing is behind you? I'm breaking my brain here. Yeah, um, let me grab it for you. It is a green... It is a neon green uh, dinosaur light, which I got just to kind of spice up the background a bit because it's a bit boring and it goes near my dinosaur poster. So there you go. Hope that helps. Um, Karen, anyone else having problems with Teespring? It was my preferred site, but I've been having trouble uploading, editing. My store pages won't load. I was told I have too many things in my store. Um, I think Teespring, Teespring have just rebranded. They are now called Spring, and they seem to be moving completely towards um, – being door for or creators who are going to drive traffic, basically. So YouTubers and podcasters and stuff. It could be that that's the problem. Um, I think they're moving away. They don't have a marketplace as such anymore. They don't have 
an organic place for people to search for stuff on Teespring. I, I would guess, although I haven't actually verified this, that stuff is still available. Like if you have the URL of your designs, you can still find them. They may still be indexed in Google, but I, but I think Teespring is saying we've had enough of that. We're moving over to being a, you know, a storefront, a kind of, um, uh, you know, host for your store, kind of a Shopify alternative, if you like, uh, but with print on demand built in for creators and people who are, who, who drive their own traffic, who have their own audiences. So I hope that helps. Um, Swearworks was wondering about that too. Manta said, thanks, best wishes. Um, okay, cool. Candies is you have a shirt selling if you have a shirt selling consistently and organically would you do amazon or fb ads if so how long would you wait to do the ads um i'm, I'm probably not the guy to ask about that i'm not au fait with amazon ads um certainly not amazon ads for well any amazon ads but yeah it's not my uh not my ballpark i i rely still on organic I think the, I'm probably missing a trick there. I probably am missing out on on stuff by not paying more attention to that. But I do find any kind of advertising a little bit um, brain frazzling, and it just turns me off. You know, all the numbers and having to manage it constantly, and and keep an eye on click through rates and a cost of sales and all that kind of stuff. Um, so um, yeah, not sure. I do think there's obviously a good a good benefit if you if you're able to run and get on top of any trend, like get your stuff out there uh, before other people who are not willing to to put um, advertising dollars behind it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm um, I'm not really used to to that. I do have some more experience with Facebook ads, but not really with with Amazon. And I've never successfully run Facebook ads to a T-shirt, except retargeting ads to people who have already landed on my Shopify store. To get them to come back and buy something that they already checked out. Round again. Uh, I can sleep again. Thanks, cool. Um, Mantis, always straight 1999 from the upload start on the merch by Amazon or play with a lower price for the first sales to boost the rank. Have you tried both? Yes, um, I've done both. I really don't have a, an opinion either way. I think uh, for stuff that's kind of trends that you're trying to hop on, if you're quick, then it doesn't actually matter. Like people searching for a particular trend, whatever that may be, let's say they're looking for a sea shanty t-shirt and they see a t-shirt and it's 1999, they are not gonna bulk at that price because it's 1999. Now, if they see a better t-shirt for a lower price, then obviously they're gonna go for the better one. But I think if you're first to market or you're one of the first to market, you can actually command higher prices in most cases. You don't have to play this race to the bottom. I know many people will put it at the lowest possible price and then slow lose it. Um, I've never done that approach, really. I've always kind of kept it competitive, but um, but usually on the higher side, and I've never really struggled. And I think, I think it does correspond with your design sometimes. Like I think my designs, often when placed against the competition, they look like they should be worth more. Therefore, people are willing to pay an extra couple of dollars to get a better looking you know, design or something like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't think it, the hard and fast rule for that. By all means, play around with it yourself. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's a, you should always take this approach kind of thing. Karen says, thanks. And Jay says he just, or he or she just got my Merch by Amazon acceptance email. Awesome. So um, good luck to you, Jay, as you start out on your Merch by Amazon journey. All right, we got a couple more minutes left here. If anyone did have a question and you want to ask it before we close this down today, um, if you're just joining us, I'm very sorry about this. Chrome won't let me upload or share my screen, so I can't do the designs that I wanted to do. I wanted to do chicken designs. I wanted to talk you through my chicken designs and why I'm making the decisions I'm making, sketching my chicken, uh, arranging it in a certain way. Maybe I'll be over the chicken thing by next week, so... But but we'll we'll try and figure this out for next week. So we just this has just been a Q and A wide open Q and A session. Um, I hope it's been helpful for those who have uh, been able to join live. I'm sorry if you're joining us on the replay or you're watching later that, that I have no egg, I have no eggs I have no um, 
chicken designs to show you. Um, it just whatever the the planets did not align for us um, for the chickens this week. So um, Swearwork says ex excellent stream. Uh, Candies, thanks so much for answering all my questions. No problem. So uh, yeah, you made it all to the end. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, my newsletter is where I send out weekly tips and updates and things that are happening in print on demand world about Redbubble, about merch, about Teespring, about whatever it might be. I have an email ready and waiting for tomorrow. So if you're not already on my newsletter, then please do go and subscribe. It's completely free at michaelessic.com and you'll be able to subscribe, get email from me, kind of core of my, uh, my sharing of tips and things like that. So uh, go and do that. And once you do, you'll also get access to some cool resources. We've got um, we've got a free ebook there, five ways to improve your T-shirt design ideas. We've got a, a resource about fonts, fonts for T-shirt designs with some links to the best fonts. All free stuff, completely free, and you can find it at michaelessic.com once you subscribe to the newsletter. So if you've done that already, please go ahead and do that. Uh, Richie says, thanks, uh, Michael. Good Q&A. No problem. Thank you. Raymond, great hearing about your successful history and skill. Thank you, Raymond. Angie, unfortunate about tech issues, but the full Q&A session has been a nice bonus. Cool. Thank you, Angie. And Amira, thank you for moving forward in spite of my Chrome. has been crazy since last night, by the way. Okay, so it's not just me. Um, some weird bugs going around. Bo, thanks for sticking around to answer questions. Sorry about the troubles. No problem. Uh, Chris, what program do you manage your fonts with? I can't remember what it's called. Um, if you go and subscribe to my newsletter, if you're already subscribed, just put your email in again. You won't get double emailed. It will just uh, it will just take you through to a confirmation page where you'll find live stream resources. In fact, if you go to, I think it's michaelessic.com forward slash live and you sign up there, you'll be kicked to a page with a font specific download resource there if you just scroll down a bit see it fonts for t-shirt design font base thank you rod and jen font base is the one that i recommend i don't personally use it um but that's the one uh that's included in that resource melanie great session candies i use right font i used to use right font um for some reason it stopped working for me i think um but yeah there we go font base is the one everyone's talking about uh kevin great as always thanks michael no problem so uh, for joining me today, guys, sorry it didn't go to plan. If you want to see what's happening in Print on Demand world, then make sure you're signed up. I'll be sending an email tomorrow with some updates on different things. Next week, hopefully, we'll be back with a, a regular stream, and I'll be able to share my screen and do some things, and we'll, we'll see what we end up doing next week. Um, but, yeah, thanks for joining me. Hope you got something out of it, and I'll talk to you next week, if not before. All right. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.